Welcome to this video, my name is Christian from Being Premiere, and I'm back with a breakdown of Season 4, Episode 3 of Evil, titled How to Slaughter a Pig. So we're starting things off with a bang. Right from this first scene, we're grown into the heart of this episode's creepy premise. A pig farm that's rumored to be a ground for a demon infested pork. The episode does a great job of playing with the audience's expectations. We have seen demons before, but demons living in pigs, that's a whole new level of creepy. The writers also do a great job of blending humor and horror, which is something that makes evil so unique. Kristen emitting concern and sarcastic humor when confronted with the possibility of the possessed pigs is almost a relief. You can tell she's been through a lot. But the episode is not just about demonic pigs, it's also about how easily evil can blend into everyday life, the farm itself and the hospital. The farm itself is not necessarily sinister, it's just a place where people are trying to make a living and they might not realize the consequences of their actions. This is also seen in the hospital setting. The practice of feedback, feeding ground up carcasses to living pigs might seem like a sensible way to save, but it turns out that this practice can actually create aggressive and cannibalistic behaviors in the animals. The episode also explores how easily beliefs can be manipulated and how easily we can be led to accept things that are not true. The tree of God, who are fake exorcists, are just trying to help. However, they spread fear and chaos. And the whole possessed pork myth is a powerful example of how easily people can be persuaded to believe in the supernatural, but in the lies. By the end of the episode, we're left with so many questions. Obviously, there is a possibility that the pigs truly are possessed. As we know, is they're close to the particle accelerator? Is the feedback the real reason? and responsible for the aggressive behavior. <laughs> and then there's the big question about the baby, the Antichrist baby. We know Leonan is aiming for chaos and destruction, and this baby is supposed to be his ultimate weapon. This connects with what David is seeing in his visions. But the episode focus on the farm and the demon infested pigs suggests that evil can also manifest in more subtle everyday ways. It's almost as evil as suggesting that the Antichrist it's not just a singular monstrous figure, but a powerful concept that can be found in the smallest, most mundane corners of our world. Could the demonic pigs could be an example of this and the kind of evil Leenian is trying to spread. The episode leaves us with a sense of unease. The pigs are terrifying and the thought of Leenian raising this child is both chilling and fascinating. We also see how in this episode, David is struggling with this, struggling to reconcile his fate with the reality of his vision. This episode starts with him dealing with the aftermath of that vision in the last episode or remote viewing. And now in this episode, a vision of the deaths of many. It's clear that David's relationship with the church and the entity is strained. He's not sure who to trust and he's starting to question the motives of the people who are supposed to be helping him. It's almost like he's having a crisis of fate. We know that the previous episode explored the ability for David to have the ability to remote view, to sense or see things that are happening far away. While he denies it, his vision of the scar in the general's hand, a detail that the church knew, suggests that he is now tapping into a new kind of power. This episode leaves us with the idea that David's visions are becoming more powerful and potentially dangerous. He's not just seeing events, he's experiencing them, feeling the emotions and the darkness of those he's seeing. This could have major implications for his future, especially if he's unable to control this new ability. As we know, his journey of has been a fate, which is a big theme in, in the series. And this episode shows him questioning the teachings of the church, but he's starting to think that the church is not always acting in the best interest of its members and he's losing faith in the people he's supposed to be serving. The episode also ends with him facing a critical crossroad. He's wrestling with his fate, his role in the church and the burden of now this new visions. It's clear that this experience is changing him, but what if he has a vision of something more evil? Will he feel that? Will he become that? I. I believe that they're setting up this for the end of the series. But his journey is not over yet as we know someone who is also dealing with visions and that is Ben who is dealing with those creepy insect like visions. He's trying to understand and push them away but it's clear that they're starting to wait on him. The episode focus on Ben's vision along with Davis 
emphasizing the power of the mind and how easily our reality can be distorted by our belief and anxieties. First thing in this episode is dealing with the navigating the aftermath of the Antichrist as well as lean in a scheme and the chaos is brought into her life. She's determined to hold on to her denial and her sanity but it's clear that her husband <laughs> and the is deeply affected by the events of the previous episodes and season. The episode really highlights the duality of the Crescent character. He's strong, but also incredibly vulnerable. And we can see the pressure of those events starting to break her in a way. Now, something that we see in this episode is the subplot of the Antichrist and the bird of the Antichrist, where we see again, Norge, Nurse Blotch is back and her return is a chilling reminder of the episode's themes. But also, as we know, she was introduced in the hospital, a place that's supposed to offer healing and care. But now we can see how she's shown to be a predator, hurting those vulnerable patients that we see with Leslie and what we saw in the previous episode, where she targeted black patients in the hospital, taking their wristbands as trophies. In this episode, she's back working for Leland and her actions are still fueled by cruelty and a desire for control. As we know, Leland is using her to further his goals of chaos and destruction, but now we can see how her actions highlight the danger to Leslie, who is now the target of Leland, and we can see how Kristen helped her because I feel that the baby, the Antichrist, is going to go in another direction, and I don't see that it's going to be bad. My favorite scene and the most important of this episode is when David, Ben, and Kristen are talking in the car and they're expressing their own mindset and their own beliefs. And I love this because Ben finally shared what he's seen and David also explored what he saw and what he feels about the general. It's really important and I feel that this brings the character more and more together. And this actually was one of my favorite scenes so far of the season. So the episode reached a fever pitch as if Leslie is trapped and manipulated by Lenin and the nurse where she escapes. And we know that the stakes are high and this is just not <laughs> any ordinary delivery. We're talking about the Antichrist and the episode builds tension with every moment as we see her trying to call Kristen and when Kristen hears that is the nurse Blodge and she knows her previous actions and knows she cannot just stand by. We see her. We see how she helps her. But yes, that chilling moment at the end when we see Kristen with the baby, the Antichrist, her baby in a way, and how this is going to be set up for the future episodes. I cannot wait to see. The show has been slow, but now I feel it's building and I cannot wait for episode four. There's a lot of unanswered questions and I cannot anticipate what Leslie is going to do, what Lenin is going to do to take the baby back again. This is a really uh, plot that is going to continue into the next episode. But what are your thoughts on how to slaughter a pig? My name is Christian from Being Premier, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. One.